welcome on this nice summer day. September, so hopefully you're getting back into the routine of life. Like this Christ candle to remind us that God is always near. Even in the darkest of times, He is the light that will get us through. In the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge that we are gathering today on the traditional territories of the Chippewa Thames and are a party to Treaty 21, known as the Longwoods Treaty. We recognize that we need to learn the rich history of this land and its First Peoples to better understand our role as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers, also our responsibility as treaty members. We believe that our relationship with the Creator the land, the people, the plants, and the animals are sacred. Our gathering hymn is number 315 in Voices United, the red book, or the hard book. <laughs> holy, holy, holy. Scripture reading today. Uh, the first one is Matthew 22, 34 to 40. The greatest commandment. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, all the law and the prophets
Our second reading is James 1, 22 to 27. But be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves, and upon going away, immediately forget what they look like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think that they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself unstained by the world. Word of our Lord. I'm going to read you a poem written by Mary Oliver. It's called Poem 133, This Summer Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention. Well, to how to fall down in the grass, <clears throat> how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds to the word of God, that they will go beyond the doors of this church and bring hope to a world in need. And may my words be pleasing to you, O God. Amen. The most famous line of this Mary Oliver's poem are the last two. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? They are taped to mirrors, pinned to cork boards, framed in embroidery, and so much more. For sure enough, these lines are worth remembering. These important lines inspire us to live life literally with intent. But the heart of the poem is a couple of lines earlier. Tell me, what else should I have done? What else, that is, besides falling in the fields all day, being idle and blessed, at its heart, this poem is a little revolution, a provocative question mark beside the conventional answers to the query, what makes for a day well spent? How should we spend this summer day? This summer day, I mean, the one we are in right now, the one we will live tomorrow. Oliver's potentially life-changing proposition is that we may very well need to rethink what a productive day looks like. 
It may look a lot less like a day tied to screens, emails, housework, errands, and getting things done. And more like the simple act of getting to know a grasshopper. And if we remember that not everyone has the opportunity to take a day in the fields to be idle and blessed, then this poem may redouble as our efforts to build a world in which everyone has the occasional time and space to stroll through the fields, wild and precious, holding a little sugar in our hand. As James wrote, we are to act on the word of God, not just So how do we build a world where everyone can enjoy a day that is idle and blessed? Matthew tells us our greatest commandment is love. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And to love others as ourselves. Loving others as ourselves. Well, that, in my opinion, is the hardest commandment of all. First, we have to love ourselves. Not always easy, because we are human, prone to making mistakes, and we tend to be our own worst critic. God knows what is in our heart, and that's why he forgives us. After all, he sent his son to die so that we could be forgiven. So how do we love others? First Corinthians tells us how to love, or how to show love. Love is patient, something that is a daily requirement, whether it is a hurdle to overcome, like lining up at the grocery store, or a challenge that requires us to stop and think about the situation before we act like another person who has said or done something to offend us. If we remember to stop, take a breath, we can see that the situation needs patience and understanding. Understanding that we all go through things that overwhelm us and cause us to act out of character. We also need patience and understanding for those who do not know God, his love, or his sacrifice. As Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If we are striving to be like Jesus, you must show patience and understanding. Love is kind. Showing kindness is a bit easier. From paying a compliment to a stranger, to helping someone in need who has a need that you can fulfill. And there's many ways in between. Love does not envy. It's easy sometimes to say, it must be nice to have, or it must be nice to be able to, we need to be grateful for what we have, instead of focusing on what we don't. Showing gratitude to God for our blessings and having that peace can encourage others. Gratitude is contagious. Love is not boastful or proud. Humility is the flip side of envy. Colossians 3 tells us humility is the patience or the practice of meekness, obedience to God, respect of self, I'll repeat that, respect of self and others, submissiveness to God and modesty. You've heard the saying, respect is earned. As Christians, we're asked by God to show respect first. 
Love is not rude. Being polite and using manners is something we have all been taught from childhood. It should come fairly natural to us. Love is not self-seeking. What we do or say should not be a benefit of just us, but to all. As Christians, we are told to put others before ourselves, but there needs to be a healthy balance. We are also told to love and respect ourselves. Love is not easily angered. Now we're back to patience. The more patient we become, the less likely we are to react with anger. Love keeps no records of wrongs. True forgiveness requires that we let go of past wrongs. This is a little more difficult to do. Our built-in defense mechanism hangs on to the things that hurt us to prevent them from surprising and hurting us again. It is a matter of trust. It can be regained, but it takes time and prayer. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. In other words, love does not encourage sin, but instead encourages the truth, no matter how much more difficult. Encouraging the truth again requires us to be patient and understanding. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. What great qualities to have. To always be ready to protect someone who is vulnerable. To have courage to trust without foreknowledge. Have unwavering hope and always persevere. We know that always is a goal that will require constant effort. Remembering these qualities of love will help us to show love to others in turn, help us make the world a better place. There are endless ways that we can make this world a better place, a place where all people have the opportunity to walk through meadows, and to be idle, and to know what truly means to be blessed. The greatest give, gift we can give all people is the greatest gift given to us from God, love. Love is always the greatest start. That same hymn, Number 333 in Voices United, Love Divine.
We ask that you bless them as, a, as they are used to further your ministry within and outside of your church. Amen. We also lift these names silently in our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you will show us our part in making this world better for all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, hymn number 138 in more voices. I don't seem to have one. Thank you. 
As we leave this place, loving God, we ask that we remember you are with us. We pray to have eyes to see others as you do, ears to hear beyond the words, and hearts full of love to show your grace and peace. In your loving Son's name we pray. Amen. Yes, I just enjoy it.